Hello, this is a quick demo of how to use the Python compute server image on CoCalc. So here I am signed into CoCalc, and I'm going to click here to see all of my CoCalc projects. One of my projects is called Demos, or a demo. I already have it made. And let's see, I have some leftover thing here. Delete that. Okay, so here we are in the demo project. I want to make a new compute server. So I'll click servers, create compute server. And uh, there's a whole bunch of different images you can choose from. Let's choose the generic Python image. This image is fairly small. It's just a minimal installation of Python. And to make things a little bit exciting, let's use an ARM64 CPU, kind of like the CPU in your phone. If you have um, an Android or iPhone, or in like an M1 MacBook. Um, so here we are, so this is an ARM64 CPU, and we're going to install stuff on it. Um, and this looks fine, everything else looks fine. And uh, I like to set DNS, so my, my ARM demo. Okay. Uh, there we are. So now let's start our server running. So it's now firing up an ARM64 server and it has the Python image. So this will take about a minute or two to start up running. And once it's running, we'll then have Python installed along with a Jupyter kernel. We'll be able to run uh, terminals or Jupyter notebooks that will run on this compute server that has four CPUs, 16 gigabytes of memory, and an ARM processor. And then we'll also be able to install whatever Python packages we want using pip. And you don't have to use sudo or anything, even though you can if you want to. The permissions are all configured so that you can just install using pip um, system-wide by default. Okay, so we have to wait until this goes over to 100% to finish with the launch. Um, we can watch the console though as it launches, which can be fun. You just click on serial right here, and then it pops up, and then you can watch the serial console of the computer as it's booting. So right now you can see that it's running Docker and then you know doing some other stuff. Okay, so I just have to wait a little longer. Um, there's a little Python server that's starting up and the file system is already mounted. And we just have to wait a little bit more. Uh, in the meantime, let's make a terminal that's going to run on this compute server. So I'll click on new and then Linux terminal. And by default, this runs on the project that is in this little uh, isolated Docker container that's part of cocalc.com. But if you click on server and then select the server that you just made, the terminal will instead run on that server uh, as soon as the server actually starts running. You have to wait until the server finishes booting up. And there it is. Server finished, and now we're running on the server. And just to confirm, uh, let's do cat um, proc CPU info, and that will tell us that you know this is kind of a special server. It's running ARM64. So let's see, uname-m is another way to see that. Notice this is arch64. Whereas if I uh, look at the default for CoCal projects, that's an x86 processor whereas this is ARCH64, which refer refers to an ARM processor. Okay, so we now have Python, and of course Python is available here. Um, that's kind of the idea, but there's not very much that's pre-installed. So maybe we have matplotlib, but we don't have PyTorch, that's missing. So we can install things though very easily. And also we have a Jupyter kernel. So if I make a new Jupyter notebook and then set it to run on the compute server, then it switches over. Notice now we have one Python Jupyter kernel, which I'll select. And like before, we can do import uh, matplotlib. Actually, I'll do pylab since that's a little easier to use. And I'll do like a little plot pylab dash dot plot uh, 127. So we get a little plot. But it would be nice to install some other things. And you can do that using pip. So just do pip install. Um, let's say PyTorch. So that will install PyTorch. 
And this will take a second. It's going out to the network, uh, grabbing the appropriate package from the Python package index, and then it's extracting it, um, maybe doing any build that might be necessary. And, ooh, did I do something wrong? Hmm, it appears to have failed, and it's telling me I should use torch instead. So maybe I do pip install torch. Let's give it a shot. Ah, there we go. So apparently um, it's pip install torch, not pip install PyTorch. Sorry about that. But here we go. You can see that it's now installing all the necessary dependencies. And then over here, it's not done installing. So if I do import torch, right now it should fail because it's not installed. Oh, it succeeded. Maybe it actually is installed. Oh, whoops. It had already succeeded. Okay, so there we are. Um, notice I'm just using an ARM64 processor. There's no GPU anywhere. So if I do torch.cuda.isavailable, that should fail. Yep, false. Okay, so we're, we've used the Python environment. We've installed a package using pip, and that's pretty much all there is to it. A compute server just gives you a really easy way to get a dedicated computer, 100% dedicated to you, on which you can run a terminal um, or any number of Jupyter notebooks. You can easily use pip to install whatever you want. Um, there's some other things, uh, by the way, with the compute server. You can easily run JupyterLab or VS Code. Uh, it'll run directly on the compute server. For example, if I click VS Code right here, uh, it spends about five to 10 seconds installing VS Code if it isn't already installed. It then launches the VS Code remote server, checks to see if the server has um, successfully launched, and then when it has launched, it pops it up in another tab at that URL. And notice that there's a little auth token equals thing here in the URL, and that's how it authenticates you. So you don't have to type in a login or a password. But if somebody else tries to connect to your server without knowing the auth token, I'll show you what happens. They'll see that, and they won't be able to get in without the token. Okay, but here we are. Um, it's the same server I was just showing you. If you launch a terminal on VS Code, then you'll see that we have Python. And we have, let's see, Python and we have Torch, just like I showed you before. And also we can do uh, uname-m and you'll see that this has, this is the ARM64 server, which is cool. Um, by the way, you can also use, inside of VS Code, you can also use a Jupyter Notebook. All you have to do is uh, make a new file and uh, choose Jupyter Notebook. And there you are. And then uh, let's do import uh, PyLab. And it will say, hey, wait a minute. There's a little bit of extras that need to be installed in order to get this to work. Um, so let's, or at least you have to do some configuration, like decide on the kernel. So we'll choose the Python environment. And I did that, and now I do pylab.plot, pylab.plot27, like I did before. And notice we are, um, so this is detecting kernels, Python environments. Oh, I have to choose which uh, kernel I'll be using. So probably the same. Okay, I selected the kernel. Now I probably have to run this again. Oops. Yeah, because I changed the kernel. But there we are, there's our plot. So we're fully using VS Code with the compute server, with um, ARM64. We can use pip to install whatever we want. And we can use Jupyter very nicely inside of VS Code, which is a great experience. Um, and we can also use JupyterLab if we want, or CoCalc itself, which has nice things like extensive AI integration and um, uh, time travel, where you can see exactly how the document evolves over time, right here. So you can see exactly everything that happens. It records it all for you. Um, and there's also some handy tools 
Like if you wanted to explain, you know, what it's doing or improve the quality or translate to another language, you can ask it to do all of these things. Okay, cool. Um, thanks a lot. And I hope you have fun using the Python image with a CoCalc compute server.